There was so much announced at the Google I.O. event this year. We got to hear about the new upcoming Pixels, the Pixel Watch, which I'm in love with, an upcoming Google tablet, and even futuristic glasses that let you see live translations whenever you speak to someone in a different language. It's like subtitles, but in real life. No. Well, what do I need subtitles for? Can't you understand what I'm saying? Hell, even the second beta of Android 13 got released with a few minor improvements. But underneath all that commotion and noise, OnePlus silently released their first developer preview of Auction OS 13, and no one seems to have noticed, or probably cared. But I cared, because I remember the good old days of Auction OS, and I want that back. I even got some hope since OnePlus announced back in February that they were going to call off the merge between Oppo. So Auction OS was going to remain its own software separate from Color OS. They're only just developing on the same code base. So with that in mind, I flashed Auction OS 13 on my OnePlus 10 Pro to see if there were gonna be any huge changes. And unfortunately, as of now, it's still got Oppo software sprinkled everywhere. But you know what? It's barely the first release, so I'm going to cut them some slack. I'm sure their biggest priority with this first developer preview was just getting a mostly stable Android 13 update. And for the most part, they did a much better job than last year. That doesn't mean it has all the cool native Android 13 features that we've seen on the Pixels, like that sweet new music player with a groovy seek bar, or the panlingual feature that lets you change the language of each app individually, or even the clipboard overlay that appears whenever you copy something. But it still comes packed with a few changes of its own. Starting with the lock screen, the voice assistant icon in the lower left corner got replaced to look just like Google Assistant's icon. Plus, you can now customize the lock screen shortcuts within the system settings underneath the home screen and lock screen section. Next, the always on display also looks like it's gonna receive a new feature. In its settings, there's a new option called scene info that says taxi and takeaway information right below it. I'm sure this means you'll be able to see the progress of your ride sharing apps like Uber or Lyft, even when the screen is locked. Plus, there's going to be a media player to let you control your music just like One UI. The power menu got a revamped design which looks really nice, but unfortunately, you no longer have the smart hub to let you control your home controls or to let you bring up your cards from Google Pay. Currently, I also can't find those controls anywhere, but it'll most likely appear in the quick settings panel just like Google did with the Pixels. If we hop into the settings, the first thing you'll probably notice is that all the menu's icons are now multicolored instead of just being a single colored theme. It honestly brings a little bit of life to the settings but I'm sure OnePlus will still let you choose to have a one accent color in the future. On top of that, a few sliders like the one found within the display and brightness section are now bigger and rounder. They look exactly like the brightness slider found within the pixels, and I dig it. The privacy menu is now separated into two tabs. You have permissions on one tab and privacy in the other. And finally, a few other menus and options got moved around with some features even getting renamed. The biggest design change though in the settings is that almost every section within a menu is now separated into individual cards, just like back in the day with Google Now. And it's a lot more noticeable when you have the dark theme enabled. I love it, because it makes everything look a lot cleaner and organized. Unfortunately, that's all the new exclusive features that I could find within Oxygen OS 13, and I know there's barely any, but it's still their first developer preview, so I wasn't expecting much anyway. What did surprise me though, is that they copied a ton more design features from ColorOS, even though they promised that they'd steer away from a unified interface. For example, the notifications and status bar section now look exactly like ColorOS's menu, from the wordings down to the design. The only new addition that OnePlus included is that they allow you to customize the app icon badges. In other menus, like when customizing the status bar, OnePlus has also copied over uh, ColorOS's secondary icons, then within haptics and tones, you'll see a video from Oppo showing off how to use the feature. Hell, they even copied over their volume controls. <laughs> the only thing I do like is that they brought over Oppo's RAM expansion feature where you can virtually expand the RAM by using extra space from your internal storage. But still, is this Oxygen OS 13 or Color OS 13? I'm not sure why OnePlus is digging their grave even deeper with these extra menus and features that are clearly from Oppo especially since they've already heard all the feedback from the community with the release of Oxygen OS 12. I'm hoping that in the next update, they get a lot more unique and simple. And that's pretty much everything found within the first developer preview of Oxygen OS 13. 
It's currently only available for the unlocked OnePlus 10 Pro, but I wouldn't recommend flashing it because it's still extremely buggy and there are many apps and features that are broken. There's even a huge caution sign on the OnePlus forum page stating that there is a risk of breaking your device. So with that in mind, if you're still the 1% who want to flash it, I'll leave a link right below the like button to the zip file. Plus, on that same page, there are instructions to roll back to Android 12, so you should be just fine. Finally, I wanted to give a shout out to MSpy for sponsoring this video. If you're a parent, you probably know how nerve wracking it can be to give your son or daughter their first phone. Sure, it's beneficial to stay in contact with them, but it also opens a gateway to other dangerous things. That's why MSpy is the best monitoring app to let you know about everything that is going on within their phone and online. And I mean everything. Once you download their Android app or iOS app and connect the phone to the platform, it'll begin recording all their data and online activity. You can read all their text messages, see who they're calling, look at any pictures or videos they've taken, apps they've installed, things they typed, and even websites they visited. You can also see their location history to see where they've been. And if they're on social media, you can even look into their DMs within popular apps like WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, etc. There's no more hiding from mom and dad. The best part is that you can take control of their phone by blocking explicit websites, applications, or even entire Wi-Fi networks. Trust me, no other parental control app is as powerful as MSpy, and even though you do need to get a subscription to start using it, their plans are relatively cheap. I'll even include a discount code within the description to get 50% off. Trust me, you won't find this deal anywhere else, so you better act fast, especially if you want to keep your children safe. Either way, that's it for this video. If you guys found this video to be helpful in any way, a quick thumbs up will be very much appreciated to get this video recommended to others. Be sure to also get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because quality videos like this are released on the weekly and you're not going to want to miss out. Either way, thank you for sticking to the end and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!